Hi, this is Tag again and today I want to do a world modeling guide on this here Asus K8N4-E Deluxe. This is, I would consider a DFI alternative for the socket 754. Uh, I had quite good luck with this one and well, I managed to push it to some really decent clocks and get some good scores on it. Uh, there is the usual volt mods here and there is also a 5 volt uh, memory volt mod which I can't yet fully recommend. It's still, um, the version I have on here is, is really sketchy. But I will show it off nonetheless, but I won't do a detailed like recap of the memory volt mod on the computer afterwards. So let's start with some stuff I've done to this board. Uh, as you can see, capacitors. Now I experimented a bit with this, uh, basically had not necessarily ripple problems, but I tried to get the ripple under 20 millivolts and I sort of succeeded. Uh, but basically what I did was raise switching frequency, which did surprisingly little. Uh, then I thought I was limited by the inductors. Uh, to high inductance, but I, I swapped those and it actually got worse. So those are the stock uh, three inductors here. But what I managed, well, which what helped me to get it down a bit, the ripple was uh, input filtering. Uh, in the beginning, I ran uh, stock caps, which wasn't good. Uh, then I ran some. Uh, 270 microfarad, 16 volt uh, aluminum polymers on here was slightly better than the stock caps and then I switched to these here uh, 470 microfarads. Now I actually might switch the two center ones to uh, 820 or 560 or all of them to 560 or something but yeah also those ones I have on here are not the best ones. This, those are uh, caps on caps from a uh, HP OEM power supply where I salvaged them from. It was basically never used because uh, HP messed up and it shorted out to ground whenever you plugged it in. Uh, so I got it for free. Uh, tried to fix it but basically it shorting out had destroyed the, the board inside the power supply to a point where it was not salvageable, salvageable anymore. So. I just harvested some capacitors from it. Uh, output is uh, FP caps, 7 milliohm is R ones, uh, 820 mic microfarads. Also have one little uh, SP cap underneath here, some MLCCs under the bracket which you can't see. Uh, basically with this I got to around 20 uh, millivolts ripple on the V-Core rail. Uh, memory volt mod, again this is the one I'm not going to show in detail, it's basically just Lifting up the leg, if this would focus. Lifting up the top leg of this fat here and feeding it 5 volts. Um, in the process of modding it around, I, I broke the fat and uh, somewhat the control circuitry. So I have my little variable resistor here. This is basically just hooked up to the uh, gate of this fat here. Uh, because after it somewhat broke, uh, the gate is always high, so there's basically no voltage drop across this fat. So basically what, what ASUS did here is a cascade of fats and every fat sort of just acts as a uh, linear regulator. So it basically just drops the, like you can imagine you have 5 volts total uh, you feed some of it into your memory and basically the rest gets converted to heat uh, on these fats. So what I did here was add this here on the gate, so towards ground to pull it uh, low. So I can basically have more voltage drop on this first fat, so the last two don't get as hot. Uh, it, it's still... Uh, Without the fan, 
you can't run this this board at like 2.8 or lower uh, memory volts um, where it really like the heat output of this uh, construction here gets low enough to be man manageable is around 3.4 volts which is perfectly fine anyways if you're running wind bonds but uh, it, it it basically makes it impossible to run no, normal uh, DDR1 on here for like extended periods of time. Personally, I don't care, but I also there is also another downside with this. Uh, this is a relatively long wire, and I noticed severe voltage drop under load with this memory setup. So. I'm probably going to double up this wire and hope that it goes away. Uh, right now I have about uh, 0.1 volts drop once I start uh, SuperPi, which is pretty bad uh, on memory anyways. Um, also Northbridge, this or Northbridge chipset, whatever, Northbridge is technically the memory controller so it's in the CPU uh, chipset here, n 4 uh, uh, here is there is no no switching frequency mod or anything. It's just uh, aluminum polymer caps. So I replace input filtering with some salvaged 560 microfarads. It probably enough so far. Uh, I I tested this a bit. I also get around 10 millivolts ripple here. Uh, those are new FP caps here on the output filtering. So those carry this this whole thing quite a bit. Uh, stock the board for some reason doesn't have chipset voltage control, so you need to do a feedback mod. All the feedback mods again in detail afterwards, which pins you need exactly. Uh, there's nothing really super complicated here. I will also show the switching frequency mod up here on the computer, so for the CPU VRM. Uh, I raised the switching frequency to something around 320 kilohertz, which is still within the limits of what these FETs can do. Those FETs here are not particularly good. Uh, I would like to raise it further with uh, changed inductors and well, changed FETs at some point. Because the controller here is pretty good. So I think it also would need to replace the uh, input filtering inductor here to something with a higher current capability. But yeah, uh, I don't think it's actually that necessary right now because uh, Ripple is pretty good for a board of that era. Uh, back of it is the usual stuff. Those are those four caps I showed you on the top. Those four, you can use either of them for measuring your chipset volts. Uh, CPU V core straight from one of these caps, the whole row down here. Uh, memory voltage, I measure from up here. There is a bunch of, no, this is actually VTT, see? Uh, VTT tracking on this board is also not the greatest. Uh, I might have to do a mod for that as well. Um, VTT should always be half of, of uh, VMAM basically, but it, it really isn't. It, it drops a bit lower on this one. Uh, memory is this one up here. So this one is mem memory. Uh, actually, no, this is VTT. This is VTT, I think. This is VTT. This is MEM and these are MEM. So this one is MEM and these two, I think. Uh, don't quote me on that. Just. Uh, Maybe, yeah, you can be 100% sure that the yellow wire here is MEM. So uh, just measure from this point to the like non-ground side of the other caps around the slots and you can find an alternative spot for your measurement wire. I think that's about it. Uh, again, 5 volt feed. I, I really don't like this. Uh, I'm either going to double up the wire or I'm just going to straight up solder a Molex connector up here. So like, just connect the Molex for the uh, 
the memory VRM. Because Moldex also has 5 volts, obviously. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it with this board. Uh, really, really nice board. Um, I would say it's not a DFI killer, but it's certainly one of the better non-DFI boards, if not one of the best non-DFI boards on, on 754. Uh, anyways, I will now move on to the computer and do the detailed volt mods. There we are, now starting with vCore. Your pin would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This one right here. You can also grab it from here and here. Now this is just a usual feedback pin mod. So from there you want your variable resistor to ground. Actually I forgot something. There we go. Uh, for values I would recommend something. This is a pretty high uh, impedance sort of deal here. So uh, I would suggest something uh, in the 200 to 500 kilo ohm range here for this very resistor. Now ground points, this side of this capacitor, these here, but I would not recommend using these here because uh, I'd rather put MLCCs on there, this is V-Core, and there is also a screw hole over here. Now switching frequency mode is pretty easy. What you want to do is, well, this is the RT pin they call it on the voltage controller. Uh, this basically regulates your switching frequency. Uh, the lower the value of this resistor here, the higher is your switching frequency. On the stock board you have a 560 kilo ohm resistor on here. Uh, what I did is just put another, another 560 kilo ohm on there in parallel. So just stack it on top of it, basically. 560. Obviously, you could also use a variable resistor here, but uh, I don't think it is necessarily something you want to fine tune a lot your switching frequency. So just go with a like SMD resistor and put it on top of there. Um, I have to say, switching frequency does not do as much as I hoped for. It maybe did. Uh, 5 millivolts reduction in ripple maximum, which is really low compared to other uh, boards or VRMs I did that mod on. Uh, in, in most cases, doubling switching frequency basically means you almost double, uh, almost halved ripple. So, not a super necessary mod, but I'm just leaving it in here because, well, always good to have options basically. So let's move on to our chipset voltage. Now we have this pin here is our feedback pin. It's also present here and here. So you have nice unpopulated pads to uh, use to solder your wire to. From there, the usual stuff. A resistor, the ground. There we are. Uh, for value, I personally use the 10 kilo ohm, but uh, 10 to 20 kilo ohms is perfectly fine here. Uh, you don't want to like raise this voltage by too much, anyways. I think, unless you're going for like FSB records and stuff, but even then, I think probably less than 1.8 volts. So not really much to do here. Uh, there is no switching frequency mod here because uh, this is a fixed 300 kilohertz uh, controller. Ground points, I am not sure yet which ones are here in this area, but well, I personally use a screw hole on the bottom of the, uh, like beneath the I.O. 
Uh, you can also use the casing of any of your I.O. ports, obviously. Uh, if you want to use a capacitor ground here in this area, I think the big one uh, should be ground on top. So this one here is ground. And now I'm going to do something I said I wouldn't, but well, I'm, I can still show you, I guess. This is the 5 volt, volt which I was talking about, and you already see that this FET is uh, like pretty messed up. Uh, the basic way of doing this properly would be to lift up this leg. Um, unfortunately, I cracked the FET doing that, so I had to replace it. Uh, then put, in my case, there is captain tape here, insulating the pad so nothing shorts out between your 5 volt and 3.3 volt rail. This is pretty important because in a lot of cases pushing uh, 5 volts in the 3.3 volt rail across the board uh, will likely kill something. Uh, yeah, the, the way Asus does this here is basically just the jump the voltage through these uh, three fats and like each one of them dissipates some of the um, basically voltage difference between your memory voltage and 5 volts or in the original case 3.3 volts uh, as heat. Actually this up here should be the VTT uh, like I think this is uh, LDO or something not sure about that right now but I think this should be management for VTT so I might have to give this a little look later on uh, anyways I think that's about it for the volt mods on this ASUS board uh, I hope it helps you and that you can well beat some DFI scores on ASUS which would be cool to see bye